Right, we've got some moody lighting and loads of piles of money. And let's find out why. Oh, woo! Mm -hmm. Aha! Is one of Dragon's Den's most famous contestants, Levi Roots. Welcome to our den. Take a seat, mate. Woo! Respect, respect. Respect. <laughs> OK, in just a little moment, we'll have a little chat with you, but let's find out more about you. Put some music in my food for me and give me some reggae, reggae sauce. Reggae, reggae sauce is a hot to mild jerk barbecue sauce. I'm looking for 50,000 for 20% in my reggae, reggae sauce. I would offer you half the money for 20%. I'd match that, 25,000 for another 20%, leaving you 60%. I would accept, gladly. Okay. <laughs> what a great position to be in when you've got people just bidding for your products. I mean, you got given 50,000 pounds to make a sauce that, um, from a recipe given to you from your grandma. I mean, how's it all gone for you? Well, it's gone fantastic. I woke up one morning, went to the BBC, slayed five dragons, <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> Wait, what a great position to be in, though. That's, that's fantastic. Absolutely. But today, you're going to be adding a special twist to one of my favourite family recipes. What are we making, mate? Well, I'm going to be doing at, at, reggae, reggae, rice, rice. Because it's so nice, nice, I had to name it twice, twice. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I can't wait for that. Right, so this is your new product, product, product. Oh, I did it three times. <laughs> Let's try it. It's not actually, it's how we call it. It's just popcorn with a bit of spice on it. Right, um, it's salty, it's a bit dry in the mouth. It's like Deborah and the other dragons. I'm out. Oh, no. I'll try. If you're wondering why Levi brought us popcorn, it's because this weekend the winner of CBBC's Me and My Movie competition was announced. It's run in association with BAFTA, and for the last six months, you guys have been busy making movies. I um, like it. Well, yo, I, you know I'm quite a glitzy guy. Like, whenever there's a red carpet, I'm there, much like Zac Efron or Vanessa Hudgens, except for I'm not a woman. So I decided to head down to the BAFTAs, children's BAFTAs, and uh, meet some of the finalists. What is this about? Is this bullying in the workplace? <laughs> Right, here we are, the most important night in children's television, and on the way are four very talented young filmmakers, and what a journey they've had. This year's CDDC Me and My Movie competition, in association with BAFTA, was launched here on Blue Peter back in June. It was a competition for young filmmakers to make a movie no longer than two minutes and enter it for a special award. We had a great response. More than 500 filmmakers entered and loads of you took part in free movie-making workshops. Once all the entries were in, a panel of top judges from BAFTA and the BBC, including Andy, had the tough job of picking just four finalists. Made me chuckle. I've no interest in seeing it again. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's a bit... I like stuff to be quite raw and quite in the face, and I felt this was... They jumped around too much. So it, 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 it this didn't work for me. So they obviously put a lot of work into it. So, who did they pick? Let's meet the four finalists. In no particular order, here's finalist number one. My name is Luke, and the name of my film is The Prank. Action. Oh, hello. Today I'm going to play a prank on the Queen. This will be fun, even if she does chop my head off. The prank is about um, a mannequin who decides to play a prank on the Queen. Um, she's very pompous and round. She's got one eye. I'm going to use this mask to scare her. <laughs> what, 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 what's going on? She gets um, very angry and decides to um, get his head chopped off. Off with his head now! I got my um, eyes and my mouth on their faces. I recorded a video of my eye and my mouth. Hello! For the Queen, I just I stretched the lips a bit so it looked like she had a big mouth. Some tips for other filmmakers are keep it original, um, use your own imagination, try not to copy other people's um, ideas. Do you have any last words? Yes. What? In your face, I scared you. Next up, finalist number two. 
My name is Ewan. My film is called My Dad, My Beer. This is my dad, and this is my beard. My dad said that if I keep my room tidy, hoover, and do whatever I'm told, I could be in charge of his beard and facial hair. The hardest bit about making the film was I had to learn how to do all the editing and get the right shots in the right way, the light and everything like that. After a month, my dad offered me five pounds to shave it off. I refused. After two months, my dad offered me 20 pounds to shave it off. I still refused. When I'm not making films, I play football with my dad and with my friends. 20! My dad, he needs a lot of practice with his keepy uppies. I've tried to teach him, but you know, you just can't teach him anything. Terrible. My tips for other filmmakers are to keep going and just believe in yourself. I thought it would only last about five days. But it's funny. I'm powerful. I'm in charge. In charge. In charge. Be in charge. Let's meet finalist number three. My name is Nikki and my film's called The Bomber. <laughs> Bomber's about this journey of the bomb from loading it into the plane to it being dropped on top of the city. My inspiration for the bomber came partly from school when we were learning about World War II and partly from the song which I found and I thought this would be good animation or film music. It's a bit sad but equally it's beautiful which contrasts very nicely the way the bomb is presented as a beautiful object but it's actually used for such a tool of destruction. I'll write down a storyboard of my ideas and then I will redraw out my storyboard in 2D on the programme and then make it 3D. Taking photos helps a lot with filmmaking because you have to look for the different angles as you would in filmmaking and it's the same idea as when you're doing it in the camera. My tips for other filmmakers would probably be to to make sure you've got good music. That's really what uplifts it and makes you feel emotions when you're watching the film. And that's what I found is probably one of the most important things for me and my films. And finally, is finalist number four. I'm Sia and my film's called Tree House Trouble. My film's about this old mysterious lady comes to the door with some magic jumping beans and um, one week later um, we, my dad's been building a tree house but he's taken the ladder down and all my friends are around and we want to get up to the tree house so we use the magic jumping beans. For the jumping, we actually use the trampoline, but we cut it out so it looks like we're jumping. But how are we going to get down? I think Olivia was best at jumping and, and <laughs> it actually looked like it was real. <laughs> Daisy is best at the emotions and everything. <laughs> Miki's best at acting and reacting and stuff. I've got a jelly bean left. <laughs> Give it to me. I got I want it. <laughs> four fantastic films, four deserving finalists, but only one could be the winner. If I win, I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably go crazy, but... <laughs> um, as there's a one in four chance. You see people walking down the red carpet and it's like I wish I could be them. And now I get a chance. If I won, then I would 
inside have we just go mad. My mum says we can have a BAFTA party at our house, so we'll, everybody got involved coming their best fox, so it'll be really cool. <laughs> How are we all feeling? Are we excited, nervous? All of the above? Yeah. Right, guys, I'll let you go in there, so uh, lead the way. And while the finalists took their seats, I waited backstage for the results, leaving Andy to present the award with actress Bonnie Wright. It's been a tremendous competition, and the final four nominees are here in the room with us this evening. They are, from Essex, age 13, Leah Cooper for The Prank. From Edinburgh, 11-year-old Erin McCulloch for My Dad, My Beard. From Nottinghamshire, 10-year-old Tia Bryant for Treehouse Trouble. And from London, 14-year-old Nikki Collins for The Bomber. And the winner is... The Prank by Leah, age 13, from Essex. Have any last words? Yes. What? <laughs> What's it feel like? Yeah. What's it feel like to win that? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and how long did it take you to put your little movie together? Because it was very good. About an hour. And that. <laughs> If you want to watch Leah's winning film, just go to the CBBC website and click on me and my movie. What is going through your mind right now? <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. And what are you going to do with your, with your brand new award? Um, I'm going to put it on my shelf. There you have it, the winner of the CBBC Me and My Movie Award. Give me some skin. Yeah. It was really good meeting the young finalists. Hopefully there might be a new famous director there somewhere. Who knows? You never know. Mm. Watch out for those faces. Right, this year's Blue Peter Appeal is up and running. We launched Mission Nutrition last month, and it's all about putting two million meals on the plates of children around the world. We launched it at the Eden Project in Cornwall, and while we were there, as oh, part yeah. of the appeal, we planted our very own Mission Nutrition garden. Totally That's some garlic, I think. We've got broad beans and all kinds of things, so hopefully they're growing. Thomas, who's seven and from Portsmouth, saw us planting our garden and he got in touch to say oh. him and his brother Ollie are also growing vegetables. That's some rhubarb and They're some massive. carrots. Yeah, he's also been growing pumpkins, courgettes, tomatoes. So well done, you two. Really good effort. And oh, Heather sent us in a letter and a picture. She's also supporting the appeal. She's 11 from Aberdeenshire. She thinks Mission Nutrition is great. She went to South Africa last year and saw some of the people on the streets with no food or water. And she's now supporting Mission Nutrition by raising money for the appeal. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your support. Yeah, and we really appreciate the messages that you've been sending us to tell us what you think of the appeal. Coastic Girl sent me a message to say that she thinks it's a great appeal and is really looking forward to raising money. But she did find the film that I made in Bangladesh quite upsetting. Now, we didn't mean to upset anybody, we just wanted to show how bad things can get if you don't get enough of the right food to eat. Right, though, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to organise bring and buy sales. Now, they're very easy, you just need to grab anything that's lying around that's not in use. For instance, this mug that Andy's been using, it's got someone's mug on it, it is me. <laughs> Look, it's just, uh, I don't know why he doesn't want to use it, I think it's wonderful. What else have you got lying around here? Or maybe this book that Helen's been reading. I haven't finished that yet, he's so cheeky. Don't give away things that you're not meant to, I'm only what, halfway through. What can I have then? Can you give me something I can have? But... I never listen to that, so you can have that. You don't listen to that? Are you crazy? That's brilliant. So once you've got your, oh, can I take that? You're yeah, that's that. never, we oh, never brilliant. Where's, that. The, where's, the, where's, where's my mug gone? Oh, here, there it is. So once you've got all your stuff together, why not hold a bring and buy sale and sell it? Yeah, if you get an adult to get onto the website and order you a bring and buy sale pack, it will make your sale go a lot easier. It's got everything you need, posters, stickers so you can price up your goodies. Get on the website, order one now and get organising your bring and buy sale. Andy, what are you doing? OK, I'm over here in the kitchen because over the next few weeks we're going to be adding a twist to a favourite family recipe. Last week, Ellen added a twist to her grandma's fly pie where she added some cranberries and some mincemeat to give it that extra Christmassy feel. Today, I'm in the kitchen with Mr Levi Roots, oh yeah, and we're going to be adding a twist to some... 
Hot, hot, reggae, reggae, rice, rice. So good there. I had to name it twice, twice. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, that sounds good. Well, we're going to be adding a twist to my uh, mom's spicy rice. And basically what she does is she adds a bit of tomato, she adds some peppers and she adds some curry powder and some onions as well. Now, what's the Levi Roots twist going to be, well, mate? Respect to your mom, Andy, respect but I'm, I'm going to be putting some of this, some pumpkin. Yes, All some right. pumpkin. And of course, my secret ingredients as well is my scotch bonnet pepper. Uh, How do I look in mate, it? I look fantastic. Do that. Yeah, just put, just put it like that. Okay, we've also got some um, spring onion, we've got some pepper, we've got some onions, um, we've got some sweet corn, um, some stock, yep. and what else? We've got some, some coconut, coconut milk, milk as well. Yes. All right, so we're going to put this on yes. the stove. First thing we're going to do is to put on the pumpkin and just get it nice and soft. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to use a spoon after we boil it for a while and mash it up. Okay, mash it up, yes, mash it up. Mash it up, mash it up. <laughs> all right, so basically, nice um, all the ingredients and everything you need to know is on the Blue Peter website. So don't worry if you're getting a bit lost, it's a lot easier than it seems. All right then, so what do we do now? Do we well, just next chop thing up we the... just need to add our vegetables. So let's chop up some stuff here. Okay. So I'll, you can chop some peppers and I'll do this spring onions. Do you know stuff. when I have the spice rice? Actually, I shouldn't call it spice rice. It's actually called jollof rice. It's jollof a, rice, it's yes. It's a Nigerian dish. Yeah. But a lot of West African dishes are very similar to Caribbean dishes, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. But there's one secret ingredient in my reggae reggae sauce that's not from Africa. What's that then? It's the pimento. The pimento? The pimento. What, what's the pimento? <laughs> the pimento is a fantastic um, Jamaican seed that tastes a bit like cloves. Oh, wow. Yes. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so once we've um, chopped all these up, did we just add it to the pot? Yes, once we've chopped all this up, we'll just add them to the pot here, yes. And I'll add some of this, my spring onions here. Like okay. Let's add some of that there. I'm going to add Will some. you add some of that, some of that sweet pepper? Yes, yeah, some you? of this sweet Fantastic. pepper there. That looks good. You put some of the onions as well? Yes, yes. Okay. Some onions there. I'll put some of this, my sweet corn. I love sweet corn. Oh, I like a bit of sweet corn as well. Let's add some of that in there. Let's chuck it all in Yeah, okay. So while well, I'm chucking, <laughs> this, chuck, chucking this all in, yeah? Yes. What's the next ingredient? The next ingredient that we're going to add after we've chucked all that in is actually to do our pepper. A scotch bonnet pepper. Oh, that's yeah. the chilli stuff, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Okay, now, when you guys are handling chillies, make sure you wash your hands um, because they can sting your fingers and also yes. if you get them close to your eye, they can be very, very painful as well. Yes. Um, you know, I like my spicy food, but let's say you don't like spicy food, what can you do to make it? Well, there's milder? a trick if you really like chilli peppers. Always remove the seeds. Mm -hmm. If you just cut it, remove the seeds and the pod, you'll get a fantastic flavour, but you won't get the hotness. Oh, really? So the so hotness is in the seeds? Is in the seeds, so take the seeds out and you'll get a fabulous flavour. That sounds yeah. like a plant. So now, Levi Roots, um, you've, you know, you've made your sauce. What's yeah. next for you? Well, next for me is the school meals that we do for my restaurant. It's fantastic. I really love it. Oh, do you know what? Um, this year, um, our, um, Blue Peter Appeal is called Mission Nutrition, and the hope is to provide meals for children in the UK and also around the world. So maybe you can get some of your hot, hot uh, Caribbean food as for the children in the UK. Fabulous. Fantastic, okay. Now, um, we're gonna let this um, boil for a few more minutes. That smells delicious, isn't Fantastic. it? Fantastic, brilliant. Okay, now have you ever imagined what it would be like to live in the medieval times? Well, this is what one girl does on the weekends. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I spend all my spare time living like people did 700 years ago. This is what it's like being me. I'm in a reenactment society and we do fairs all around the country. My mum has made all of my medieval dresses. Now we're going to do some archery. He's probably the best. Oh, he's ready! It's because he's the oldest. I enjoy archery because it's fun. Yes! This is Freon. This is the leg armor. This is chain nail and it's much heavier than it looks. My leg arm on. This is how they take chain mail off. <laughs> yeah, well. You wanted to know more about what it's like to be Rebecca, so we asked her some of your questions. How long did it take you to learn archery? It didn't take me very long because someone said I might be a natural. Yes. What is your favourite medieval food? My favourite medieval food is saffron chicken. My mum's going to cook that tonight. Is there anything that's better about medieval times than today? Being in medieval times is better because you're always outside. <laughs> Hundreds of people come to watch the knights fight and I try not to get nervous before the show. This is Montague. He's going to fight. The most exciting bit of the day is when the knights fight. Sometimes I help the knights put their armour on. Their armour weighs about as much as me. I water once sometimes. I give water to the knights. Because they get really hot in all their armour, 
while they're fighting. When you've had like loads of practice, then you get knighted. They let girls be knights. I want to be a knight when I'm older. I've had a really great day. Hope you've enjoyed your visit. And now you've seen what it's like being me. <laughs> See, I think Lucy would love a bit of dressing up. Walking around with a, with a bit of chains on or something. Her colour in chainmail. No. Really? Ooh! Andy, what's going on over there? We've got our rice rice almost ready. Um, we've already got some sweet corn in there. We've got some spring onion. Yes. Some normal onion, some mm -hmm. pepper, some chilli. Some chilli. Some pumpkin. Yes. You know, some stock in there as well. Yes, and maybe some sweet corn as well. Ooh, it's yes. smelling good, Levi. Yes. Now what's next? What we doing? Next is the final frontier. The final yes. frontier. Yes, yes. Like so that. what we need to have now is that this, which is our coconut milk. Okay. Let's dash that in there like that. Dash up the coconut dash milk. Dash it in there like that. Um, and what's, and what's this going to add to Well, it? the coconut milk, you know, as a restaurant, we don't really use Use salt a lot in Jamaica. Well, don't use salt no, not at all. Oh. So when we're using coconut, it just brings that little bit of natural saltiness to it. And it's quite creamy as well. It's isn't? quite creamy and it's a natural flavour. I love that a lot. Fabulous. Okay. What's Next, we need to have this little knob of butter. Knob of butter. <laughs> Stick it in there. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and then, then of course we're gonna add our rice. Okay, yeah, so we stick rice. our rice in. Let's yeah, add stick our the rice, rice in, in as well. Fabulous. And um, do we need Fantastic. to add some water in there? So yes, because what is gonna happen now? We're gonna have our liquid one inch above the rice once it's settled. And how long so do you leave it in there for? Maybe 20 minutes or so, just on a very low heat. All right, just leave it to simmer, yeah? Simmer, yes. Very nice, very nice. Just for time, we've already got one hot, hot reggae, reggae rice, Ooh. rice right here. And my original mom's jollof rice. Yummy. Yeah, here we go. Let me just serve oh, this up for you guys. Why are they different colours? Um, basically, because we've um, added pumpkin into this one, the reggae rice rice, and we haven't put any chilli powder in it. Let's try a little bit of this then. Kind of changes the colour a bit. Okay. I've got a chilli. Mmm. Mmm. That is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't really like rice normally, so that's good. It's nice. And if you want to learn how to make this, all you need to do, go to the Blue Peter website, then Blue Peter Central, things to do, and bake it. And maybe you've got your own family recipe that you've been uh, hiding for years, like, I don't know, like a, a baked bean and mozzarella pie. <laughs> yeah, if you make that's that, it. definitely take a picture and send it to us. Whatever you make, whatever your family recipe is, take a picture of each, each stage, write it down and send in a picture of the final dish. The best ones will go on the website. Yeah, why don't you have a go at making this with your family as well? Now, Levi, thank you very much. Respect, much man. respect, yeah. much respect. <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. That's delicious. And if, uh, well, next week actually, I'm gonna have a go at making a bit of a secret family recipe. And the top chef's gonna spruce it up and make it all like lush and stuff. Nice one. Yeah. Next time on Blue Peter, we'll be unveiling our Christmas card and we'll show you how to make it. And will I help succeed in getting an American football team back into their league? And if you've missed any of Levi's recipe, head over to the website. And if you've missed any Blue Peter, head over to CBBC Watch on the CBBC website. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, guys. Bye. 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 And here's a special message from the weather team. The weather conditions are absolutely superb for bringing and buying right across the country. So support Blue Peter's Mission Nutrition. Get involved. Ben, check out these great holiday snaps. There are families who have taken part in the CBBC show, Give Me a Break. Oh, yeah, where well, the kids take control of their family holiday, making it a lot more fun. Look at those smiles. And if you'd like to do the same, listen up, because we're looking for families to take part in the next series of Give Me a Break. For more details, log on to the website and click on Be On A Show. Miss Meredith said I mustn't shout in French. I said I don't shout in French. I shout in English. Listen. Ah! C. This is going to be completely uh, unique. Just for fun. We make Britain a safer place. Just for CBBC. Boom, boom. For one whole week. <laughs> it's Barney. Yeah. So to sum up, Barney's best bits. Just for you. <laughs> Don't you dare forget it. All this week on the CBBC channel.